Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy The Four Fills, and I'm back again with another video. Now, the Tekken video, as you guys can see. Now, if you're anybody who is currently playing Tekken and you're stuck within the ranks of Mighty Ruler all the way to around Blue ranks, right? If you're stuck between those ranks, around Mighty Ruler, all those purple ranks, this video is for you. Today, I'm going to be giving you guys the top four tips that should take you guys from Mighty Ruler all the way to blue ranks now if you guys haven't really followed the series it's just started for me in my previous video you guys can go check that out if you missed it i did a video on can Ryu all the way up until mighty ruler i gave you guys five tips now i'm giving you guys four tips for mighty ruler all the way up until blue ranks about fujin and above right now i want to say before i start the video everything i've talked about in the previous video also applies to this video so it is pretty important that you do watch the previous video if you haven't watched it everything applies and it all carries over to this video okay now that we've set that in stone let's go ahead and get into the video man all right so the first thing i have on my list is optimizing your punishes now a lot of you guys punish things when they're unsafe right but you have to learn to optimize your punishes a lot of people punish things based on the muscle memory and if you have the wrong punish in your mind then you're always going to go for the, the same thing i'll show an example here let me put on the frame data for um for jen here right if i put the opponent's frame info uh, show details and there we go. So I'm going to make Jin do pretty much his health sweep here. Right? If I block this, as you can see on Jin's frame data box at the bottom right, it says that Jin is frame advantage is minus 31. That is heavily launch punishable. Very, very punishable. When I say launch, I mean, of course, when you launch them off the ground and then you get a combo afterwards. Now, this doesn't only apply to Jin, this applies to many moves in the game in general. If you are not aware of how punishable a move is, most of the time you will default to doing the same thing. Now the safest thing to do is wire right and four for pretty much every character in the game. Yes, it's consistent, yes, you'll get a punish. And then you might do a, uh, a 13 frame punish or 14 frame punish for your character. I could easily do this every time. If I didn't know how punishable it was, I just do this all the time without knowing but look at how much difference knowing actually helps because if i do know look what i get instead all right look at the difference in rewards in the damage i got compared to just doing this now that could be the key difference to winning an entire match in tekken tekken is not a game where you want to be giving your opponent multiple chances to get back up and fight if you can end the game in two hits end the game in two hits that is how you play this game you don't want to give them multiple chances to come back so punishes are extremely important because you'll be dealing twice as much as not three times as much of damage than what you would have normally done if you didn't know the optimal punish so that is number one know your optimal punishes number two heat dash combos a lot of people around the ranks of Mighty Ruler are not utilizing their heat dashes enough. They're stuck doing heat smashes all the time. Whereas heat dash in a lot of situations is a better utility than heat smash, especially when you've already punished your opponent with a launch or poke, anything that launches in general. Ending with heat dash tends to be better than using your heat smash unless there's heavily amounts of scaling. Now, you should use your heat dash because it'll do so much more damage. For example, if I was to do this, Sixty-seven damage, standard combo, right? I could do something else. I could do. Seventy-two damage, fine. Right? But if y'all if I was to use my heat in this, right? If I was to do this. Do that again. Go this side, there we go. Heat. Let's say I spent my heat smash here. 
See how much that scaled? That is a lot of scaling. That is the wrong combo route to do for any character. The scaling will be too much. You would need to use your heat dash combo to do more unscaled damage. Even though it will be scaled a little bit, it will be a lot more unscaled than using your heat smash at the end of a combo and wasting it. If I was to do this instead, this would be the correct thing to do in most situations. And as you can see, much more damage than I got earlier. Make sure you're using your heat dash combos. A lot of the reasons why a lot of people in the purple ranks are losing games is because they get the hit which is able to kill, they simply don't do the correct combo route that will kill. Therefore, they leave their opponent alive and their opponent somehow makes a comeback and they feel like, oh, why am I losing games? You had the hit to kill, simply didn't capitalize for it. So, optimize those combos, use your heat dash combos, they do a lot of damage for pretty much every character in the game. And yeah, you will find a lot more success optimized. Number three, this is something I emphasized in the first video also, but I want to bring it back into this video because it's very important. Mix up your throw game. Now, once you get around the purple ranks, people start to actually tech the one plus two breaks. I wouldn't say consistently, however, they do take it here and there. If you happen to be a character who has two break throws or one break throws alongside one plus three throws, uh, you want to mix up all of those options. You know, I've seen it too many times watching people play in those ranks and they will attempt a throw, say it was a one plus two throw, and it works, right? It worked. There was no break. And they will not throw again a single time throughout the entire match. And I always ask myself, why? They didn't break a throw and they lose the game too. And I'm like, you found the opening with a throw, which was successful, and you didn't try to use it again to see if they're actually able to throw it. These are the sorts of things you have to keep in mind when you're playing the game. People aren't breaking your throws, abuse them. If they are breaking the one plus two throw, oh, do you have a different throw? Do you have a two break throw? Try the two break throw as well, because the chances are they're not ready for all the different breaks, especially not at Mighty Ruler rank, let alone even Blue rank. They're not ready for all the breaks. Most of the time, they're only ready for one or two. Well, one plus two break is the only type of break they're usually waiting for. Make sure you switch around. Like, make sure you're... What's the word I'm looking for here? Make sure you're... Alternating? Is that the word I'm looking for? Just make sure you're using all of your different grabs. That's what I'm trying to say. Do not just stick to using one grab because if they keep breaking the same grab and you go for the same grab, well, you're not mixing it up. Mix up your throw game. If your character doesn't have a great throw game, let's say Brian, for example, he's got like a... Most of his throws are like one plus two break, right? So he ain't got the greatest, but you can still make do with a one plus two break. There's other aspects of the game than just throwing. But moral of the story, make sure you use your throws. Number four, and this is the last one, it's shorter than the first video I've done. Make sure you recognize strings. You need to start recognizing the strings that characters are doing to you. It's okay to get hit by a string you're unfamiliar with. Let's say, for example, Jin did a string. Let me demonstrate. Go, let's say, for example, Jin did a string. Now, this would apply to every character in the game. Say, for example, Jin did this. Right, he did one, two, four, right? Let's say after one, two, I press a button and I get hit. Just like this. Now, I might have gotten hit by this string because I was unfamiliar. I may have never seen it before. I may have just not been used to getting hit by it. So I pressed a button not knowing it wasn't my turn. That happens to everyone in Tekken. It happens to absolutely everyone. Now, the thing a lot of people do is they don't recognize that they've been hit by it. They just say, oh, I got hit by something. Let me just keep playing. No, you need to recognize what just hit you. Like, even if you watch your game back, you need to recognize how this string came about. You need to see what the string is. So the next time you play against a Jin or whatever character it was, when they go for that string, even if you get hit by it again, you would know why you got hit and what you got hit by. It's all knowledge. You just have to know what you got hit by and why you got hit by it. Then you can apply it to your game, how you're going to actually about stopping it now in this case you would be ducking this right in this case 
if you dock, it's a high. You know what I mean? If you dock it, you can get a launch punch. So it's all about knowledge. Start recognizing these strings and you will stop losing so many games to things you don't know. It's okay to lose games to things you don't know, only if you're learning from it. If you're not learning from it and you're just going straight to the next game, not knowing again, playing against the same character, yeah, something's not, something's not really, that's not good. You're not going to learn and you're not going to improve. You have to start ducking these things. Well, not specifically ducking, but you have to start dealing with the strings in the correct way. And of course, the um, the tips and replay modes will help you with that. It really will. So make sure you're, util you're utilizing that as well. Okay, that pretty much sums up everything for this list. This was a shorter list than the other one. I had four points for this one, five points for the previous one. However, keep in mind that everything from the previous video, Gary to Mighty Ruler, it all, it's all connected. It all transfers over to this video as well. So there's a lot more points than it actually looks. However, if you do use both uh, this video and the last video, all the skills, all the points, you take all of those notes, you will be advancing into the blue ranks and you will no longer be stuck in the purple ranks. So now let's summarize everything we learned from this video. We have to optimize your punishes, optimize your combos using heat combos, heat dash combos. Make sure you mix up your throw game, not only one plus two throws, but also two break throws, one break throws, mix it all up. And then we have recognizing strings and lab the counterplay. Okay. That pretty much sums up my points for Mighty Ruler to Fujin. You know I'm saying purple ranks to blue ranks. Hopefully that helps some of you guys out there. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions that were unanswered. I'll be happy. I'll be happy to talk to you guys in the comments as well. Let me know what video you guys want from me next, and I'll try and make it happen. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you guys like, subscribe if you're new, share it with your friends, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Man. Peace.